The ancient philosophy of yin and yang could not be explained literally in a better example than the geopolitics of the Korean Peninsula. After being subjected to Japanese imperialism for the first half of the 20th century, Korea, now divided into North Korea and South Korea, could not have gone through a more contrasting evolution than they ended up with. Welcome to Nutty History. Today we're exploring the secrets, mysteries, and insights available into the life that has lived behind arguably the worst absolute totalitarian state, DPRK, also known as North Korea, where hundreds of thousands of people are in prison with their entire family for insignificant reasons. A hungry country. The secrecy maintained by the despotic regime of North Korea has kept a strong lid on the information and the progress of the country. The last statistics available about North Korea are from 2017. The GDP of the country is only 2% of South Korea's GDP and is nearly insignificant in comparison to the U.S. The GDP per capita is even more concerning at $1,260, indicating overspread poverty in the country. That is 30 times less than their closest neighbor, South Korea. For a country running on an economy favoring the workers, it has an alarming unemployment rate of 30 to 40 percent, while Japan, South Korea, and the U.S. all have it under 5 percent. Only a year after the death of Kim Il-sung, the founding supreme leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea, the country was hit by one of the worst famines that Korea witnessed in modern history. Only 17 percent of the land is arable in North Korea, and the desperation to increase the yield has only been detrimental. North Korea had to accept aid from their self-declared arch-nemesis, the U.S., to bail them out from worse during the 1990s when three million people died. The country that the Kim regime likes to paint as the villain sent nearly 600,000 tons of food in 1999 alone through the United Nations World Food Program. The country has been on the verge of running out of food in recent times again. It's estimated by the North Korean government that about 40% of young adults in the country are malnourished. The lack of adequate foreign exchange hasn't helped to make things better as the country often falls short of being able to buy food in the international market. A space image of the Korean Peninsula that went viral on the internet a few years ago showed how all of South Korea lit up the image while most of North Korea remained dark except Pyongyang and the surrounding area. The economic sanctions in the international market against the Kim regime's policies haven't helped the economic and food crisis either. They have limited access to fertilizers, pesticides, and modern machinery. This reduces crop yields and makes farming more labor-intensive. Also, the quality of soil in the arable area is deteriorating, and the strategy to cultivate slope farms has backfired. Short growing seasons, unpredictable rainfall, frequent floods, and droughts have made farming their staples, such as rice, corn, potatoes, soybeans, and sorghum, a risky business. Deforestation has only eroded soil and worsened the impact of droughts and floods. The high censorship of information and knowledge has kept farmers from adopting modern agricultural practices. The Weird Laws of North Korea There are absurd laws and violations in North Korea that could result in the harshest punishments. Now settled in the U.S., Yeonmi Park witnessed her friend's mother's death sentence being carried out publicly for the crime of watching a Hollywood movie. One could face the firing squad for the crime of making an international call. And according to a defected North Korean soldier, the firing squads are a regular occurrence in the military's daily routine. On paper, North Korea boasts religious tolerance behind its walls, but the reality is very different. There are only three gods in Korea, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, and Kim Jong-un. Even if the people are allowed to practice their religions, they're expected to incorporate worshiping their supreme leaders in their religion and must be worshiped as the highest deities. Even the slightest offense could be considered not only treason, but also blasphemy against the supreme leader. Oh yeah, and also, the Bible is banned in North Korea. In 2015, the then Defense Minister of North Korea, Hyun Yong Chol, made the mistake of falling asleep in a meeting where Kim Jong-un was present. The next morning, he faced the firing squad publicly. Ordinary people have faced similar punishments for much, much insignificant offenses. If a person is found guilty of committing a crime, which is pretty much a surety after they're accused of it, not only the criminal, but their grandparents, their parents, and their children would also be sentenced for similar or at least some sort of punishment. That's called the three-generation punishment. The North Korean regime of Kim Jong-un not only controls what people can read, write, sing, or watch, but also how they may have their hair cut, and in many cases, what they might eat. There are 28 approved haircuts in North Korea, 18 for women and 10 for men, not including Kim Jong-un's own haircut, which he wanted to keep unique for himself. So much for people's leaders. Customs check the luggage of tourists and travelers extensively for what music, literature, and media they might be carrying before allowing them access to the country. A country incarcerated. 
But that is the design that the reigning Kim Dynasty of dictators created for North Korea. The country itself is a massive prison where very few can go in or out. In fact, living in North Korea is very likely more miserable and stressful than a large number of existing prisons in the current world. It's illegal for North Koreans to leave the country without the government's position. Those who are allowed to travel abroad, like diplomats, elite students, recruited workers and athletes, are monitored a lot more than a person on parole, and they must attend special ideological debriefs once they return to North Korea. Most prisons around the world allow limited use of the internet and have regular weekly movie nights. Some prisons even allow pocket radios along with libraries full of books to choose from. In North Korea, uh, no. Most of the villagers do not even know what the internet is. Western media of all forms and anything from South Korea is strictly forbidden, and for books, they are mostly allowed only to read government propaganda. Propaganda makes them believe that they live in the greatest country in the world, and the rest of the world is an evil place, that it is way worse outside than how things are in North Korea, and they have no source of information available about the outside world to figure out the lies. These lies were formulated decades ago to ensure that the Kim Dynasty would rule the country for generations and become the longest-running dictatorship since the foundation of DPRK, or North Korea. Nobody is safe. There is no certainty that one can live their life peacefully in North Korea if one obeys all the rules and laws of the North Korean regime. The North Korean police guards have the utmost authority to arrest anybody, anytime, and anywhere without explaining why. This includes people who are the creme de la creme of the North Korean regime in given circumstances. When Kim Jong-un learned of his uncle's treason, despite him being a general, Uncle Chung song Tech was dragged from the National Assembly by guards and soon after was eliminated. Kim Jong-un also ordered the end of his half-brother Kim Jong-nam in Malaysia. According to defector who used to serve the North Korean police, they use punishments such as public barrenness, prolonged periods of exposure to the elements, use of electricity in the cruelest ways, overstuffing detainees in small cold cells, individually incarcerating them for several weeks in really tiny cells where prisoners won't be able to stand upright or lie down, hanging them by the wrist in an excruciating position, using water in threatening ways, and deliberate starvation. A man known by the pseudonym David saw his mother being sent to a concentration camp when she took an international call from David's father, who was missing for a year. The father revealed that he had escaped to South Korea and he would soon make arrangements for the family too. However, David's parents were not aware that their phone was being tapped and the authorities soon arrested the mother. There are 15 to 25 concentration camps in North Korea, holding about 200,000 prisoners, among which 40,000 prisoners are political prisoners. Things get way more severe and grave in these camps than the punishments and torments we mentioned earlier. According to those who managed to get any information about these camps, especially defectors who spent time, they mentioned things being worse than Auschwitz in these camps. Prisoners get next to no food and medical care. David's mother told him that every prisoner gets only 15 to 20 kernels of corn, along with mostly skin of corn or mashed potatoes mixed with stone or coal. The guards would beat men and women alike in regular caning as part of the daily routine. One former inmate who says she was detained for a little over a year in 2015 after complaining to authorities over her housing situation likened her treatment to that of an animal. She says, when we raise rabbits, we keep them in dens with fences and give them food. In prison, it was like we were the rabbits, kept in a cell and given food from behind bars. We were not treated as humans, but as some kind of animal. This again according to the survivor whose name was kept secret to protect her family in North Korea. Sanitation mostly doesn't exist in these camps. Even a female soldier who defected mentioned that the bunk beds allotted to them in the military are made of rice hull, which would soak in the sweat of two dozen women soldiers sleeping in the same hall, and it would rank in the most revolting manner. North Korean soldier Oh Jong Song is the son of a major general and lived a comparatively more comfortable life in North Korea than his peers. One day he drank too much and accidentally crossed a checkpoint in Panmunjom, John, that's a peaceful village at the border with South Korea, in his military jeep. His own friends shot at him, and he had to ditch the jeep and keep running. Oh Jong Song said nobody would have believed him if he turned back and he would have been sentenced to death, so he had no option but to keep running south. He also confessed that his friends shot at him because otherwise they would have been heavily punished and he would have done the same. Oh Jong Song was found wounded from multiple shots. His medical case drew a lot of attention in South Korea and the U.S. It's also revealed the terrible case of parasites prevalent in North Korea, as Oh Jong Song was found to be infected with dozens of intestinal parasites. Clearly, we have not covered nearly every aspect of the bizarre life in North Korea because a lot of them are just too crazy and heinous for this platform. But thank you so much for watching Nutty History, and we urge you to like and share this video to support us making more videos like this one. Also, subscribe to find and watch more of our videos, and we'll see you next time on Nutty History.